Welcome to Meet the Candidates. My name is Nick Asante. I'm a senior at Richard Montgomery High School and your 43rd student member of the Board of Education. When I look back to just a little over a year ago, I think about the many ways in which our world has been completely altered in just the span of 12 months. I wanna thank you all for entrusting me to serve as your voice during a time of historic crisis and an era of extreme uncertainty. This past year, like many of you, the Board of Education has had to navigate challenges and jump over hurdles no one could have ever imagined. As I've engaged with you through regular social media updates, a monthly SMOB newsletter, virtual town halls in every region of our county, student-centered focus groups, and a myriad of other forms of communication, you've served as the driving force in the work done at the board table. This year, we brought MCPS into the 21st century by ensuring that Chromebooks were available to over 160,000 students, a truly incredible feat. Our amazing bus drivers, cafeteria staff, teachers, and hundreds of community volunteers served to millions of free meals to students and their families. We developed a robust online model that has unlocked a plethora of possibilities for the future of how we conduct education in our county. Although COVID-19 exposed many cracks within the foundation of our educational system, we've worked to fill those gaps and push our county forward. And serving as your SMOB, I've been graciously tasked to represent you and your interests at every step of the way. Through our connection, we as students have brought unprecedented pro progress to our county this year. Over the summer, as our nation engaged in dialogues about racism and systemic oppression, the students of Montgomery County called upon their elected officials to work towards dismantling the systems of racism present in our county. As a result, the Board of Education launched a system-wide audit to do just that, and also passed a resolution to ban all hate symbols in our school communities. For years, students have vocalized their concerns about climate change and the importance of taking action to prevent its adverse impacts on the world. Because of that advocacy, this year, the Board of Education approved a contract that puts us on track to have 100% electric school buses by 2035. During this one-of-a-kind term, I worked with you all to champion initiatives like increasing access to menstrual hygiene products, ensuring our grading policies this year reflected the state of our world, calling for revisions to our attendance policies, and much more. Despite the unfavorable odds brought forth by the current state of our world, the student voice prevailed. But that fight for change isn't over yet. The next mob, whoever they may be, will have a vote on a 4.5 billion dollar budget, the selection of our next superintendent, and every single policy for the largest school district in the state of Maryland. As you watch today's video, think about the candidate that you believe will best serve not only you, but your peers, your siblings, and your entire school community. Think about the candidate you believe has the drive and passion to bring about the change you hope to see. Think about the candidate you would be proud to have represent you at the board table. This last year has not been easy to say the least, but we courageously persevered. It's been an honor to serve as your 43rd SMOB. And as I wrap up my term, I look back on the progress we've made and feel optimistic about the future of our county. And so once again, thank you. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, it's time to meet the candidates. Today, you'll have a moment to learn about each of our two candidates who are seeking your vote to serve as the 44th student member of the Board of Education. The two candidates elected at the February 17th, 2021 SMOB nominating convention are Mr. Henry Kay and Ms. Hannah Looney. Each candidate will have a moment to briefly introduce themselves and then they'll share their positions on a few key issues important to students across Montgomery County. This program will help you be best prepared to vote in the SMOB election on April 22nd and 23rd, 2021. Let's begin. Mr. Kay is a grade 11 student at Richard Montgomery High School. He's an Eagle Scout, varsity athlete, and small business owner. As an Eagle Scout, he improved his community through various initiatives, including one where he worked closely with the National Park Service to lead a project that built a campsite on federal property. He's also a varsity athlete, where he's demonstrated his ability to lead a team, overcome challenges, and be successful. Henry's also a small business owner, where he's demonstrated leadership through running a successful local business and dealing with challenges of budgeting and operations on a day-to-day -day basis. Henry? I hope you're well. My name is Henry Kay and I'm running to be your 44th student member of the school board. 
I began this campaign because I believe it is fundamentally difficult to become involved and participate in student government and student advocacy at the county level. If you face a language barrier, work a part-time job, take challenging courses, play sports, have responsibilities at home, participate in activities outside of school, or live far away from the school board, it is incredibly difficult to become involved, share your opinion, vo and voice concerns about your education. The incredibly high barrier to entry for countywide advocacy has led to a lack of diversity and equitable representation for students in Montgomery County. This needs to change, and it needs to change now. Under our leadership, we will lower the barrier to entry, incorporate all student voices, close the achievement gap, and stop simply talking about the points and bring substantive change as rapidly as possible. I thank you for your time today, and I look forward to discussing what we are going to achieve together. Thank you. Ms. Aluni is a grade 11 student at Richard Montgomery High School. Hunt has fought for educational equity in MCPS for over five years, serving as the president of the Countywide Middle School Student Government Association in 2017, and currently acting as the vice president of the Montgomery County Regional Student Government Association, where she works closely with MCPS staff. She served on a multitude of policy work groups from MCPS, including the District Assessment Committee, which she served on as the only student for two years to advocate for the ending of park exams and an over-reliance on standardized testing. This past year, she worked with MCPS staff to write a resolution to get free menstrual hygiene products in all middle and high schools, which passed with a unanimous vote in December. Hana. Hi, my name is Hana Oluni, and I want to thank all of you for watching this video today. Serving as the vice president of our countywide SGA, attending schools in six MCPS high school clusters, and visiting every single MCPS middle and high school throughout my campaign, I have become all too familiar with the inequities that exist in MCPS based on where you live, what school you attend, or who you are, especially in the wake of this pandemic. But COVID didn't break MCPS. It revealed what was already broken. Let's use this moment to create a school system where everyone has an equal shot, where schools don't just prepare us to take exams, but how to actually succeed after graduation, where teachers actually look like us and our stories are taught in curriculums. Policies like these and others you'll hear to that throughout today's video are what I am committed to enacting as your SMOB. Reach out to me at Hana for Smob on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Snapchat as you watch today and visit hanaforsmob.com for more information. Welcome to both candidates. Today, we have a series of questions to ask and learn more about each of the candidates and their vision for their work in this position. I'll ask each candidate to keep their response to 30 seconds so we have time to discuss multiple issues. Hana, will begin with you and alternate who answers first as we go. For our first question, for many students, it's been over a year since they last sat in the physical classroom. As the county works towards returning students to school buildings next fall, what initiatives will you propose to deal with learning loss? Hanno, we'll begin with you. Yeah, the reality is that as we return to school, we just cannot expect students to learn the same way we did pre-COVID. Disruptions in schedules, loss of instructional time, and lack of guidance has resulted in huge learning losses. And we need to make sure that we aren't just throwing students back into pre-pandemic expectations. Review of old content needs to be merged into the teaching of new concepts. And because COVID impacted each of us differently, we need to assess how each individual student needs to be supported educationally and emotionally. Thank you, Henry. Absolutely. And this COVID has really had a detrimental impact on many, many students and their learning. We need to start off by sitting down with all stakeholders. We need to have a meeting of students, curriculum writers, teachers, counselors, and college professionals and determine exactly what our students need to move on to the next level. If we could determine that material that they need to know, prioritize it and make sure that our students are learning that material and not redundant material, not conducting busy work, we can make sure that our students are learning what they need to know to be successful at the next level. Thank you. And now for our next question. For years, the opportunity gap has greatly affected students of color in our county. Although MCPS has attempted to make an impact through various initiatives, what solutions do you propose to address the growing opportunity gap? Henry, we'll begin with you. Absolutely. And there are huge disparities in the way and the, the quality of learning that our students have within Montgomery County Public Schools. I think we need to move on and, and move on from what we did with the redistricting survey, take those lessons and make sure we implement them. At the same time, I think we need to implement policies within Montgomery County Public Schools so that we have fluidity of resources. 
We need to have the autonomy and the ability to quickly and mobile, quickly and efficiently mobilize resources to schools that may be struggling, schools that may have an influx of students, or schools that may need extra support. So while making sure we're fluid with our resources, making sure our resources are distributed equitably is something that we need to do on day one, and we will do it on day one. Thank you. Hannah? Simply put, in a county as resource rich as Montgomery County, your race, socioeconomic status, language, or zip code should not determine the educational opportunities that you have access to. That's why we need universal test preparation for college entrance and Madden exams so that cost isn't a barrier to opportunity. Investing in early childhood education like pre-K and Head Start and expanding classes, extracurriculars, and programs at every middle and high school so that where you come from or who you are doesn't determine your educational experience. Thank you both for your answer. Our third question, in what ways do you believe COVID-19 has changed the way students learn and how will you address the challenges that have arisen as a result of the pandemic? Hannah, we'll begin with you. Yeah, if there's anything we've learned from this pandemic, it is the importance of face-to-face -face interaction. We've learned how crucial casual conversations with our peers are in enriching our educational experience and the value in having your teacher by your side instead of through a Zoom screen. That's why as SMOB, I will fight to bring key middle and high school experiences like sports games, plays, in-person performances, and dances back safely because these are the experiences that define our youth and give us an investment into our education. Thank you, Henry. Absolutely. So COVID has exacerbated the problems that have persisted for years. I think when prioritizing our students' learning, we need to make sure that our students have equitable access to resources, to counselors, to teachers and curriculum. By starting by doing that and, and really kind of addressing the problems that have been exacerbated by COVID, we can make sure students have an effective and safe return to school. On that same note, we absolutely need to make sure that we are promoting per prote personal protective equipment and other safety precautions as students roll back so that we can have a safe rollback and all students can really reap the benefits of those face-to-face -face interactions and learning. Thank you both for your answers to that question. Our next question, regionally and globally, climate change continues to become a growing issue. What reasonable solutions do you propose the school system enact to help address this regional and global issue? Henry, we'll start off with you. This is an incredibly important question for the student member of the school board because the student member of the school board is the only member who will actually feel the detriments of what we're doing to the climate right now. We will be the only likely living member who, who feels the benefits and what we're doing to the climate at this moment. I think what we need to do is we absolutely need to update climate curriculum. At this, at this point, it's very dated and very mild. We need to make sure that we're pushing for updated curriculum in all schools and incorporating third-party nonprofits like climate.edu. Moving forward, we need to make sure that all schools built within Montgomery County are green ribbon schools. And finally, we need to make sure that we're implementing new technologies into our school buildings. Thank you. Hannah? At the end of the day, addressing climate change isn't just about protecting our planet, but also about securing an inhabitable future for our generation. That's why I propose that all water fountains in schools be replaced with reusable water bottle filling stations, which are both environmentally friendly and ensure clean, consumable water. And that all construction of new school buildings ensure renewable energy sources like solar panels are used, in addition to implementing sustainable practices like composting. Thank you. Now our next question. Although they are necessary, Budget cuts often reduce funding for many essential programs and academic areas. As we move into financially tumultuous times for our county, what would you be willing to cut from MCPS's $2.7 billion operating budget? Hannah, we'll start off with you. Study after study done on the presence of armed police officers in our schools has concluded that they do not make us any safer from intrusions or attacks while criminalizing black, brown, and disabled students and feeding them into the school to prison pipeline. That's why we need to take the $3 million that is invested into this program every year and reinvest it back into our students through mental health and counseling programs. Because schools should be places where we build students' futures, not destroy them. Thank you. Henry? I would agree that school resource officers and the, the studies have shown that they are detrimental, but I'm quite surprised that she brought that up because Montgomery County Public Schools does not fund that program at all. It's the county council. So I think working together with the county council to, to secure more funding and also making sure that we're reducing our environmental impact. By reducing our environmental impact, in the long run, we can save money on water, natural gas, electricity. 
and make sure that we have an environmentally sustainable and ecologically friendly school system that's saving money. Thank you. Our next question. Many students in our county suffer from depression, anxiety, and related mental health issues. How can the system better support these students? Henry? Absolutely. So there's a couple of things that we need to do starting on day one. We need to swell the number of counselors, college and career readiness counselors, and mental health professionals like psychologists. I think at the same time, we absolutely need to take a paradigm shift of what our counselors do. Right now, many counselors serve as the facilitators of the course registration process. By creating a streamlined course registration process that is countywide, we can make sure that our counselors are incentivized to reach out to our students and help them. And then also making sure that we're destigmatizing mental health, making sure from the county down, from the county level down, we're emanating the fact that it is a fact of life and it's not, and it should not be picked on or bullied. Thank you for your answer. Hana? Especially during this pandemic, so many of us have dealt with increased feelings of isolation and in some cases, depression and anxiety. We need to be training teachers to recognize the signs of mental health conditions so that we can bring students the help they need. We also need to bring students in to lead the change to reform our health curriculums, to better address mental health conditions and destigmatize this conversation, and ensure increased flexibility in everything from due dates all the way to attendance as we return to in-person learning. Thank you. Our seventh question, how will you work to bring more exposure to diverse post-secondary options, including college and career to MCPS students? Further, how will you work to expand access to our career and technology education prog programs? Hana, let's start with you. Yeah, we need to invest in curriculums that actually prepare us for life after graduation and not just how to fill out a Scantron. Not all of us are going to go to college and the content we learn in school needs to reflect that. Currently, many career pathway programs are extremely inaccessible to students. So I'd like to work towards a future where programs in carpenting, plumbing, nursing, or architecture are available at every high school, and that middle school students are also exposed to the different paths available to them through comprehensive career exploration opportunities. Thank you. Henry? Absolutely. And I think within Montgomery County, there's a stigma around not going to college and there's a stigma around not about, around pursuing a career that that's not that doesn't go to college. So we absolutely need to reduce that stigma. We need to expand programs like Thomas Edison High School that teach our students fundamental essential careers that keep our country and community running. At the same time, we also need to make sure that within all our schools, students have access to programs like quantitative literacy, financial literacy, because without these programs, you can be an astrophysicist or a plumber, but if you don't know financial literacy, it's going to be extremely incredible. It's going to be incredibly difficult to be successful. So making sure we're implementing all three of those programs. Thank you both for your answers to that question. Our next one. Next year, the board will be conducting a search for our next superintendent. What qualities do you hope to see in the person chosen, and how will you ensure the student voice is heard in this decision? Henry, let's start with you. Absolutely. So the, the superintendent is the sole employee of the Board of Education, and we need to make sure that this individual represents our students. They will take in the students' voices into every decision that they make, every implementation of policy that they make. So making sure that this individual has integrity, the ability to listen, and making sure that they are willing to listen to student voices is something incredibly important and something that I will push for. Thank you. Hanna? I'd love to see a superintendent that reflects the diversity of our school system and is a champion of the student voice. Someone who looks like us, talks like us, and sees the same problems in our system as us. As I always have at the board table, I will continue to involve you in direct policy making that includes big decisions like who our next superintendent is gonna be. Because at the end of the day, we, the students, are the biggest stakeholders, the customers of an MCPS education, and the way we create policy needs to reflect that. Thank you. Our next question. In light of the important conversations that started taking place in our county this summer, the Board of Education launched an anti-racist system audit. How will you use the results of this audit and the inputs you get from your peers to address racial inequities that are present throughout our school system? Hana, let's begin with you. When I think back on the 12 years that I've spent in MCPS, I, like many of you, can only name a handful of teachers of color that I've had. In a school system as diverse as MCPS, we need to make sure that our staff is reflective of the demographics of our student body and that our curriculums are taught from a diversity of perspectives. 
When the results of the audit are released in October of my term, I want to dive deeply into our hiring processes to recruit more teachers, administrators, and counselors of color, and bring other students of color into conversations about reforming our curriculums. Thank you. Henry? The audit is going to tell us what we already know. It's going to tell us that there are massive inequities, especially for students of color and for low-income areas in Montgomery County. So starting off, we need to... Uh, we already know what it's going to tell us. We need to make sure that we're implementing diverse curriculums, especially in our core curriculum classes, like history, like science, like mathematics, ensuring that we're incorporating diverse perspectives and allowing students from all different backgrounds, religions, races, and zip codes to talk in the conversation. Because by having open conversations, we can break down barriers and make a more inclusive and welcoming community. Thank you. And now for our final question. Students in special education and ESOL programs are often let, left out of the conversation surrounding Board of Education decisions. How will you work to reach out to all students and ensure their voices are heard at the board table? Henry, let's begin with you. Absolutely, and I am a massive, massive proponent of lowering the barrier to entry for student-wide government and student advocacy. I think it's unacceptable how we have a small number of students representing the mass amount of students within Montgomery County Public Schools. So we need to lower the barrier to entry and especially allowing students to testify in the language they feel most comfortable. With specific regards to students with disabilities, making sure all students feel comfortable and know about board, about the meeting, board meetings, about opportunities to get involved. And I'm also a large proponent of expanding corollary sport programs like softball, handball, and bocce into our middle schools so that all students, regardless of their abilities, can participate in quality athletic programs. Thank you. Anna? At the end of the day, my singular MCPS experience cannot and should not be expected to speak on behalf of all 163,000 students in MCPS. That's why I'm committed to sharing this seat with you. Throughout my campaign, I've created coalitions specifically for the DCC and NEC, as well as a student advisory committee to help me make decisions at the board table and translate my materials into different languages and mediums because I believe that the SMOB is not just one student seat at the decision-making table, but rather a chance for all of us to have our voices heard. That's all the time we have for our discussion. We encourage schools to invite the candidates to visit their schools and meet with students before the election on April 22nd and 23rd. Each candidate will now have an opportunity to provide a closing statement. Henry will speak first. This is the most consequential SMOB election in recent years. The next student member of the school board will be dealing with monumental challenges that must be overcome. During this unique time, we no longer need a student politician. We no longer need an MCR executive to perpetuate the MCR to small pipeline. We need change and we need it now. To deal with these challenges and this troubling time, we need a leader who will rise above the status quo, a leader who incorporates every single student voice, a leader who will fight tenaciously for our students, a leader who knows how to bring substantive, equitable, and just change in an efficient and effective manner, and a leader who has demonstrated the ability to get things done. I am this leader and I stand with you. With our policies, the council and input of all students, regardless of race, religion, zip code, language, or accessibility to the board, and your support, we will stop just talking about the issues that are facing Montgomery County Public Schools and find solutions to benefit all of our students. The time for change is now, and together we will build the best MCPS possible. I thank you for your time and ask that you vote Henry K on election day. Now, let's hear from Hannah. This is probably the most important small election in any of our lifetimes. From reopening schools to the anti-racism audit, the boundary analysis to the future of school resource officers, we currently stand at a defining moment for our county. That's why, especially this year, it is really important to elect someone who has demonstrated a long history of commitment to our school system and our students. I've committed myself to MCPS and promoting educational equity behind the scenes for over five years now, reforming our county's mental health policy, getting rid of park exams, and securing free menstrual hygiene products along the way because our voices matter. I'm not just talking about change. I've been enacting it. Over the past three months, I've visited your schools, heard your concerns, and talked about the changes you want to see in our educational system. You've taught me that in Montgomery County, we may not all come from the same place or speak the same language, but we are one student body determined to come out of this pandemic stronger and better than ever. We can work to diversify our staff so our teachers look like us and make our curriculums actually relevant to skills we need to succeed in the real world. We can keep snow days and increase mental health support for our students. 
and we can get back to a new and improved normal where we can actually interact with our friends and feel safe in school. That's the MCPS I'm fighting for, but I can't do it alone. When we come together, when we learn together, and when we fight together, there is nothing we can't achieve. I'm asking for your vote today because it is time MCPS finally reflect your needs. So join my team, join the movement, and vote Hana for SMOM. Thank you, Henry and Hana. In closing, please listen carefully to a statement from Divya Vankalanka and Marcelo Garibaldi, the Special Elections Administrators. Hey everybody, my name is Marcelo Garibaldi, a senior at Northwest High School and one of your Special Election Administrators this year. My name is Divya Vakalanka. I'm a junior at Northwest High School and the other Special Elections Administrator this year. We lead what's called the Special Elections Committee, which is a group of students from across Montgomery County charged with organizing and running the entire SMOB election. On February 17th, we held our first ever virtual nomination convention that was attended by nearly 500 student delegates from middle and high schools around the county. The diverse field of 10 candidates was narrowed down to our two finalists. One of our two finalists will be elected by students in grades 6 through 12 to serve on Montgomery County's Board of Education as a full voting member. The Montgomery County SMOB is only one of two SMOBs in the entire state of Maryland to have full voting rights, giving us a unique opportunity for student voice. Seniors like me also have the opportunity to vote and leave their legacy behind with MCPS. This election has nearly 88,000 eligible voters, including outgoing seniors. It's very important that every student cast their vote in this process and has their voices heard. The SEC has developed many resources to learn about these two candidates and allow for all students to make an informed vote. Not only have you seen the candidates speak on this program, but each student will receive voter guides with detailed information on both candidates in your MCPS email. And on election day, you'll receive a summary of their platform and ideas on the voting screen itself. This year, you will have two days to vote. The ballot will open at 7.30 a.m. on Thursday, April 22nd, and will close at 3.30 p.m. on Friday, April 23rd, 2021. The two-day voting window aims to accommodate students over two days and to ensure students have access to the ballot regardless of an A or B day schedule. Thank you all so much for listening, and we can't wait to see you turn out to vote on April 22nd and 23rd.